Hey, so we are back for another session with uh, Lara Owen from GitHub. She is the head of workplace at GitHub. And uh, it's the famous open source development platform for those who don't know GitHub. Um, what is very interested about, interesting about GitHub is that they're a really big company and they actually have a head office in San Francisco with employees working from there, but they also have a huge amount of people who are working remotely. So they have to manage both kind of culture of in office and out of office and then put it together. And Lara, its job is really to make this link together and making sure that everybody has an equivalent work experience. So she's going to share with us what it is uh, to, to, to build a distributed workforce um, remotely. Um, so I'm gonna bring Lara to the screen right now. And one second, this is her slide. This is you, I'm unmuting you. Hi. Welcome, hey. <laughs> Nice to see you and nice to have you today. I'm going to hide myself now, reminding everybody that you can ask questions below in the Q&A section and then we will answer them in 30 minutes. So have a good one, Lara and uh... Thanks, uh, a virtual hello to everyone out there. This is Building a Distributed Workforce and I am Lara Owen, the Global Head of Workplace at GitHub. Um, as mentioned uh, previously, for those of you that don't know, uh, GitHub is a software development platform. Um, we take code, uh, we share it with each other, uh, we learn, um, we have over 19 million users, um, so a lot of knowledge, um, a lot of information, a lot of code, all in one place. Um, and GitHub is a very social um, code sharing platform. Um, we are uh, a very distributed company, as also uh, previously mentioned. We're over 600 employees uh, in 17 countries and 34 states in the United States. Uh, we have our headquartered office, which is about a third of our company in San Francisco. Uh, then we also have offices in Boulder and in Tokyo. Um, in addition to that, we have about 10% of our company working out of different co-working locations. Um, it's a benefit we provide um, because we understand that even though people are remote um, for whatever reason sometimes their home office is not uh, the best space for them to work in so we have co-working locations in over two dozen um, spots from as far away as Nashville uh, to London uh, to Hobart um, to Berlin and back again um, and then about I guess 60% uh, of our company uh, works remotely so they work from uh, all over the globe, um, whether they're in their home office or they're traveling. So we are a fully distributed company that is both uh, co-located um, and remote. Um, in <laughs> addition to that, uh, there's me. I've been with the company for about four years. Uh, GitHub's been around for nine total. Uh, my job started off as uh, building out offices for GitHub. So I've built our Amsterdam space, which is on the left there, um, and our Tokyo space on the right. Um, <laughs> My role um, has grown since then. Uh, I not only do leasing um, and contract negotiation and operations, but really focused on how do we bring 900 or sorry, 600 plus people, we'll get to 900 eventually um, together um, and make it cohesive. Um, and part of this year has been a lot of traveling, uh, talking to a lot of our uh, employees about what it means to be distributed and, and working on a philosophy. Um, so uh, I, yeah, distributed workforce is something I'm super passionate about um, on a macro level. I believe that when, wherever we have talent is where we should have opportunity. Um, on a micro level, uh, GitHub is a global company. We should be a, or sorry, it's a global community and we should be a global company. Um, so everything we do um, is in line and for the benefit of our, our users. Um, in addition to all the things I do for GitHub, I'm also an excellent puppy cuddler. Uh, we have puppies in our uh, headquarters in San Francisco and uh, human selfie stick. So I'm a one-stop shop of talent. Um, <laughs> for this talk, um, I'm going to talk about uh, three main areas. Uh, we just had um, Josh go through an awesome talk on all the hows and what's of running uh, a remote company. And I wanted to look at some of the uh, psychology and anthropology um, behind um, where we are with uh, distributed workforces. Um, I think understanding the why is really important um, on where we are now. Uh, nobody has quite figured out uh, or perfected, um, you know, remote um, and distributed work 
Um, so I wanted to focus on psychology and virtual comms, uh, the value of IRL or in real life, um, and what happens when you, you have a mixed company um, like GitHub, um, or whether you have a company that is completely co-located co um, and thinking about um, attempting flexible work schedules or um, starting remote, um, how that all works out. So we're going to talk about those three things today very quickly, of course, um, don't have a ton of time. Um, but for virtual comms, uh, I want to start at the most important place I could think of to have this conversation. And that is with emojis. Um, these little guys were created in 1999 and have really taken off since 2010. Most of us have used them, uh, whether on our phones, uh, emails in Slack. Um, we also uh, have incorporated them into our product on GitHub. Um, that's how important they are. But most people don't think um, about the why. Um, why are emojis so popular and so prevalent? Um, and I'm gonna give you an example to help you understand that why. Um, and I want you to think of a coworker, uh, can be any coworker or a friend um, that sends you uh, this, or I guess it has to be a coworker, but sends you this, this message. Um, there's going to be two messages. This is the first one. Give you a quick sec. And then this is the second one. So this first message, you better not be late to the meeting. Um, when reading it, I'm sure you read it as an angry uh, threat, right? Do you just better not be be late. Um, when I read it out loud, right, my voice gets lower. Um, I can feel my body tense up. Um, there's better not be late to that meeting, right? There's a, a, a bit of a aggressiveness to it. Um, but in the second one, right, with the winky eye and the tongue out, um, when I read it, you better not be late to the meeting. There's almost a joking quality to it. Maybe you've been late to this meeting every time, right? And maybe that colleague's a friend. And this is really important um, to understand that 90, or sorry, yeah, 93% of um, communication um, is nonverbal. Uh, most of the communication we do uh, is through face, through uh, body language, um, through cadence, through tone. Um, so written communication is really uh, difficult. There's a lot of room for error. There's a lot of room for misinterpretation. And when only given 7% of um, the connotation behind somebody's message, humans tend to skew negative. We tend to uh, view it as a threat. Anybody who's been in a heated um, comment section debate knows uh, that <laughs> things can quickly uh, get very heated and out of hand. Um, so not having face-to-face um, -face communication uh, is very difficult. Um, and especially with a lot of uh, distributed teams who don't um, always work in the same same time zone, there's been a lot of importance put on asynchronous communication. Um, and I don't want anyone to uh, misunderstand. I am a big fan of async. I'm a big fan of recording, um, of writing, um, of, of keeping track of how you came to do a decision um, for people who can't be there in real time. Um, but understanding that is literally the worst <laughs> uh, form of communication for really important discussions um, is, is imperative to a distributed uh, workforce. It's it's so bad that um, asking for um, a promotion or a raise in writing is 35 times more um, likely to be rejected than doing it in person. So I highly recommend all important questions be done uh, in person or virtually in person. Um, Luckily, you don't need a lot of virtual communication um, to overcome um, and to get uh, a better uh, response um, from your written communication. So uh, this is a fun screenshot um, from some of our, our hubbers, that's what we call our employees, uh, get, having a little get together. Um, our comms team, or sorry, our support team, <laughs> talking about communication, our support team um, was growing rapidly um, the past couple years, right? They're a fully remote team. Uh, they cover 24 time zones. I think they have over 80 people in the organization. Um, and they noticed they were writing a lot and people were getting heated and there was a lot of friction. Um, so they instituted what they called the water cooler. Um, so once a week, I think for about an hour, people got together 
um, and chatted, they got to know each other, right? They humanized each other. Uh, they learned uh, each other's voices so that when they read uh, a difficult uh, line or something that they felt was um, maybe a little too harsh in the feedback, that they could read it in that person's voice. And they learned just by having these hour long meetings to get to know where they went on vacation, how their dog is doing, uh, all that kind of stuff that makes people people, um, that they reduced a lot of um, those miscommunications in writing. So, you know, if you, you have a distributed team, um, I highly recommend getting people together um, for as little as an hour a week to, to humanize each other um, for, ah, Oops, sorry, a little too quick on that one. Um, of course, um, virtual communication provides about 80% of um, the needed information um, to, to really communicate effectively as a distributed team. Um, there's still a lot of um, things that you miss if you don't um, meet up in person. Um, right now I'm giving this talk and uh, you may not be able to see my pupils dilating. Um, <laughs> when you meet someone you like, they get bigger. Uh, when you uh, meet someone you don't like, they actually shrink. Um, there's a lot of communication that is still missed um, when you do uh, video conferencing. Um, so we uh, also are firm believers uh, in what we call summits and mini summits at GitHub. Um, so here's some pictures from our practice past uh, company summits. We get everybody together um, from all over the world to come together um, and it's pretty fantastic and great. Um, the opportunity to, to touch and well, with consent of course um, and to know, know each other and to know that we're not just um, VR simulations uh, behind computer screens is a really great opportunity. Um, there's also a lot of serendipitous interaction happening big enough um, and we've been doing mini summits for a while but we've gotten big enough where we started to focus on more uh, mini summits than this big annual summit um, simply because we can get a lot out of um, smaller teams we do of course departmental mini summits where people get together um, for a couple days to so up to a week um, we also do um, regional ones as well as um, different groupings. So we have an annual women's mini summit that addresses some of the topics that are um, specific to women. Um, but generally uh, what we've learned from these summits and these mini summits is to get the most out of um, in IRL interaction, um, you really need three things. Um, and the first thing you need uh, is a um, work deliverable. So this is a cool little um, illustration that our people ops team did. Uh, they were another team that's been growing really fast and is really amazing. Um, and they got together last year and wanted to put down um, during their mini summit what their goals were, what their purpose statement was, and to start creating a roadmap. So they worked through that. Um, they hashed it all out and they got this illustrator to create this really awesome um, one pager for them so that everybody knew what they were doing. And this is really important because if you're going to ask people to travel, uh, whether it's by train or, you know, go through airport security, uh, they need to walk away feeling like that was uh, worthwhile for them, that um, they can, uh, that they got something out of it for their job, for their role, and that they understand their department or their team. Um, it doesn't have to be this big uh, for travel in person. It could be you're meeting one-on-one -on -one with somebody, um, but having a goal or an intention um, is, is definitely uh, one of the most important things you can do when, when getting together. Um, another thing that we found that is really important um, when you spend the time and the money to bring people together um, is to, to have fun and have a new bonding experience. Um, so these are some fun pictures. Uh, this is uh, one of our um, summits. We did some whitewater rafting. And then this was the most recent um, team, a uh, workplace team uh, mini summit we did where uh, our new uh, Tokyo office manager joined us. Uh, and we took these little yellow go-karts, um, which are tiny compared to real cars all throughout San Francisco. Um, but getting out, uh, people out of their, their head, out of uh, the office or out of their home office, um, getting them out of their day-to-day -day is really important to create um, team bonding. It doesn't have to be like corporate trust falls. It doesn't have to, um, it definitely shouldn't just be dinner. Um, it should be an activity that allows everybody to really get to know each other and to have a fun memory that they take away. Um, the last thing um, 
that uh, we've found is that you have to get out of your day-to-day -day routine. Um, this again is our awesome people operations team. Uh, they are primarily based in headquarters with a few uh, remote uh, employees, but they have made a point of going uh, to Monterey, to Napa, to Palm Springs, getting away from the office. And this is really important um, because if you don't, if you, if you meet up in uh, you know, your co-working location or a space near your house, um, the chance that you will be distracted either by work or by um, life obligations and not really be focused on on the task at hand um, which may you know that opportunity to meet up um, may only come once a year um, it creates uneven um, experiences it, um, it people don't bond as well when they know they have to go home and do laundry and it, they definitely don't bond as well when half the team knows have, they have to go home and go do laundry and the other half of the team you know is hanging out after dinner you know enjoying themselves so these are the three things that we found at github that are that are super important um, and um, we recommend uh, that when you do to spend that time and money um, that you focus on um, getting out of your in-person interactions. So last section, um, we're gonna talk about offices. This is the other um, in real life situation uh, that offers a lot of contention, uh, especially for um, companies that have chosen to, to mix um, <laughs> their, their working styles. So, uh, you know, fully remote companies don't have um, as many, uh, don't have this issue. Um, but I wanted to start this off with a, a little story. Um, this was a picture of our Oval Office, um, our reception area uh, in our headquarters uh, that we opened almost four years ago. Uh, this is an amazingly cool, well-designed space. It's super awesome. Uh, I believe it was designed to scale. Um, fantastic, great space, but GitHub, um, while we do work with government agencies, is not a political company. And um, we're also not just an American company, we're an international co global company. Um, so we wanted to uh, revitalize this space to redo it, to reassess and rethink how we wanted to um, have a good guest uh, experience. And so we turned it into a cafe. Uh, we partnered with a local coffee shop, um, brought in baristas. Um, our first floor is all centered around community space. So we have a full kitchen, bar, lecture hall, um, but these spaces were really for afternoon and evening. Um, and we wanted something for the morning. Uh, we wanted a space that people knew how to work in it, right? So whether you were in our office every day um, or whether you only visited once ever or once a year, um, you knew that you could come to space, open up your laptop, grab a coffee, and you were good to go. Uh, the problem happened to be, uh, one, we were all really caffeinated the first week. <laughs> we were having, everybody's having issues uh, sleeping. Um, but the, the, the problem is we started hearing grumbling. Um, grumblings from people who weren't based in our office in San Francisco that, that are we going to get a coffee stipend? Uh, you, why do you guys get free coffee now in, in headquarters? Um, and that, of course, uh, resulted in grumblings from our, our people who worked in San Francisco saying, well, you don't have to commute. You don't even have to put on pants. Um, we, why, why are you asking for free coffee now? That's not fair. And then it became an echo chamber of thus, us versus them and became the great pants versus coffee debate um, of 2016. Um, and <laughs> by the way people talked about it, you would think that coffee was the most precious resource that had ever been created. And that's all we did at headquarters. And you think that people who didn't work at, in San Francisco did nothing but sit on a beach, pantsless, drinking Mai Tais, um, and this kind of us mentality, um, I've noticed a lot, not only in GitHub, but throughout the, the, the tech community, there's this idea that either you have offices or you don't. And I think that's, that's a false decision. I think you can have both. I think you have to be really methodical and thoughtful though for yourself and for your company about what you want. So GitHub is really focused. Um, I really focused this past year about defining why we still have offices specifically for GitHub. And the answer for me is community. Um, like I mentioned before, GitHub is a, um, 
uh, our headquarters has a huge event space. We host at least two events uh, every week. Uh, we work with nonprofits. Um, we really believe in um, fostering a local community um, and an international one. Um, we also, uh, for our offices, uh, also pictured Boulder and Tokyo. Um, you know, they're smaller teams. Uh, the opportunity to come together, we've had people had their mini summits there, um, so the teams get people to come visit them. Tokyo was our first international office, um, so we had some ideas about what we wanted to try out. Some challenges have arisen um, since then, and, and we've, we've worked on solving them. So it was a great learning experience, but those are really what offices provide. The days that you have to be in an office to be productive are, are over. Um, in fact, most people aren't, find themselves less productive in an office, especially if you have an open uh, floor plan. Uh, people will hide out in telephone rooms or anywhere they can find um, a quiet nook. We also, because we offer flex time, um, people will work from home when they have to get a lot of work done. So. Um, really community for us, but if community, right, if you don't have a huge uh, social impact team or events team or outreach team, um, then maybe that's not the reason you have an office. If you can justify having it, uh, great. And if not, don't worry about it. Um, I think the other thing uh, that's really important, whether you're making the decision on, on to open an office or to try um, <sighs> flex time or to try remote work is how good are you are at um, setting expectations um, and empowering your employees to do the best work of their life, regardless of um, how or why they work. Uh, a good example of this is we give um, stipends to our remote uh, employees to uh, spruce up their home offices. Um, and uh, our remote employees got together and have um, been sharing pictures of their their home offices um, it's a good reminder um, for people that um, they have the ability to make their space what they want it to be to work in the space that is is most productive for them um, and i've been found by empowering people um, to make these decisions um, to, to to build their best uh, home office, they don't really worry so much about the grass is greener. They have what they need um, to, to work in, in the best way possible. So if you decide to go um, that path of a mixed, <laughs> uh, you know, located uh, company, um, really focusing on, on empowering your employees, giving them autonomy and flexibility, but also being very clear about what their role entails, because not all roles can um, or should be uh, remote and not all uh, roles should be or need to be in an office, um, but being clear about that allows people to see, okay, there's different jobs that need to do different things and have different things, but I have what I need um, will um, help with that uh, kind of us versus them mentality. So that's where I'm gonna end it today. I could talk about a million more things, but hopefully that has uh, been helpful for you. Um, just to give you a quick TLDR, um, if you're skipping to the end of this recording um, or you've just joined us, things you need to know when building your distributed work company uh, or work <laughs> is use emojis, hang out with your coworkers, don't wear pants, drink coffee, you do you. Um, and hopefully you'll be uh, successful as well. So thanks. I think we're gonna do some Q&A now. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you very much for this new perspective of one company that has actually an office and then has to deal also with the remote workers and the different inequalities. And you know, it's, it's very interesting. So I'm sure yeah, people have been really liking it as well. You can see people um, writing their comments in the, in the, in the chat. So let's go ahead and ask some questions. We have a good, a good amount of time, so that's really good. Um, so our first question is from Franz, and he's asking, GitHub is one of the biggest brands in the dev product ecosystem. I'm sure a lot of people think a thousand times before applying, and maybe in the end they don't apply at all because of imposter syndrome or lack of self-confidence. Are you doing anything specific as a company to make sure people who stumble into your openings are encouraged to apply? Ooh. Well, I think you'd probably have to ask our, <laughs> our uh, hiring recruiting team. Mm -hmm. um, we do on the back end, um, you know, try to be very clear uh, about the role expectations um, and requirements. We also do um, look at minimum 
Oh, Lara, Lara has been disconnected again from like maybe the other time. So um, I'm just going to just write a little message to her again. And it seems to have a little disconnection sometime. One moment. Um, I'm just going to try and bring her back in. Oopsie. Um, there's a way for me to bring her back, but I'm just going to try. Um, it seems to have like a little bit of a... I'll post that again. We have a good time for Q&A, so it's not too bad. Should be on. Okay, so she just reloaded her browser. She's telling me she's talking to me in Slack at the same time. So we know she's still here. <laughs> it's not her internet. Um, oh, here she is. Sorry. <laughs> We did something with Crowdcast today because we had the same problem with Libby's session in the Q&A. So the good thing is we are in the Q&A session, so it's a bit easier than uh, if it was during your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, you were talking about um, this hiring. So you think we should? You, you think it's easier to ask the hiring team about this? Um, oh yeah. Sorry, I continued for quite some time, I guess, since we cut off, but. Um, GitHub tries to lower the barrier um, for entry and for applicants. Um, the wider your, the net you cast, um, the bigger the funnel you have, uh, the better applicant pool. Um, and we don't want people self-selecting. Um, so I know our recruiting um, and our social impact team has gone through and really they focus on um, the bare bones of what they need for that role when they list it, um, as well as ensuring that the, the interview process um, is as um, welcoming as possible um, but we don't try to list 20 things on a job rack that we might or kind of want we list the five things that you definitely need to have um, we know that uh, women um, and people of color often um, won't apply for a job unless they they feel that they have everything on that list so we don't want long lists um, so if you're applying for github and you see something that looks interesting to you that you feel is a good fit apply for it um, we listen, we, we want that big funnel. We want as many people applying from all over the place as possible. So if you see something awesome, please. Good. I think it's good trick. The five things, very concise, pretty good. Um, another question from Matt, uh, since GitHub has, uh, uh, also has several offices, have you been able to calculate the actual savings a remote employees offers the company over those working on premises? Um, so the short and the long of it is yes, it's definitely cheaper uh, to have remote employees um, than it is to have people in an expensive city like San Francisco where rents are astronomical. Um, but there are there is value for both. So um, <laughs> if uh, if it is in line with your budgets. Um, I, I say do what works best with you for you. Um, I my CFO will probably hate me for saying this, but I like to focus on the people first and the money second. Um, yeah, it's definitely cheaper to go remote. Um, but for us, we want we want offices to be part of the equation. So um, it's not so much that we I think would ever go go full office or full full remote. So. I hope that's an acceptable answer. Right. Yeah, of course. Um, another question from Noel. Um, mm -hmm. Noel is asking a lot of questions, I think. <laughs> and uh, all the questions are always really good. What are your thoughts on always uh, on always on video? Uh, e e i e perch. I think he's saying. Mm -hmm. um, oh, here it is. And we and can we expect any further innovation with video and remote working in the next two three years? Um, I'm sure we can uh, 
expect some innovation in the next two or three years. Uh, everything's growing. GitHub does not do the uh, full-time video. Um, we're very thoughtful about it. Um, for some of our employees, it's uncomfortable to be, to think that you might be on camera, um, even if it's in a community space or even if it's just in, in an, uh, a, a conference room or people uh, have it streaming from their home office. The thought of me being at my computer when I'm working at home and someone can just pop in and watch me all the time and not yeah. realize it because I'm deep <laughs> in thoughts and just typing away. Um, like well, playing with your nose and <laughs> yeah, you're like you just forget the camera. Ads. <laughs> or you're checking yourself out. You're like, ooh, selfie, and then you suddenly realize your boss is on there. <laughs> you know, I think there's opportunities for for awkwardness. Yeah. Um, we've definitely done it for um, some of our um, uh, all hands meetings. So company wide meetings will stream live from a, our Boulder office and they're aware that that's happening, that they're on camera, that they're on, um, that there, there may be sound at some point. Um, but we always like to ask permission. Um, part of creating office space or a work culture is about making sure as many people feel comfortable um, and not everyone feels comfortable being recorded. So that's always something to think about. Um, in terms of the technology behind video conferencing, we've already seen a ton of um, improvements. We use Zoom. Um, hmm. They have not paid me to say this. This is just what we oh. use um, <laughs> here at GitHub. Um, and we found it's uh, amazing. People put links in their calendar invites um, and then we've tied it to um, Team, which is our desk and um, conference room management tool. So essentially I can book a meeting uh, walk up to a conference room, my meeting room is booked, press start meeting, walk into the room, and it says, you're gonna, uh, there's a little iPad on the table that says start Zoom meeting, and I press okay, and then my conference is all set up. So in two clicks, I have essentially streamlined the entire process that I don't have to think, and then, uh, as well as if one of my remote people have, uh, employees, hovers have um, started the meeting, they'll get a little ping that says, um, your meeting has started, your attendees are waiting. Um, so creating all the streamlined process has been something that we've seen huge improvement on. Uh, we also have metrics dashboards. So how many uh, meetings uh, go unattended is great to know. Um, how long meetings often last, um, generally between 30 and 60 minutes. Um, having all this information, we can know how uh, our conference rooms are being booked, um, how many rooms don't end, get booked but not used. Um, so I think really the, the back end is where we're going to see a lot of growth um, from, from virtual reality. Of course, there's the hardware side too. Um, it's not something that we're heavily invested in, but companies that have uh, executive business centers, like full on, you know, virtual reality walls of screens um, and the hottest, you know, six figure gadgets, um, that area is, is huge too. So I think there's a ton of innovation. Uh, finding what works for you, there's so many tools out there, um, is fantastic. So that is what I have for that. Well, that's really interesting. <laughs> Thanks. Um, another question is from uh, KG. His question is, have you got any suggested reading to learn more about these psychology perspectives you are discussing? Um, I just go down the internet rabbit holes. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> there are scientific journals that you can read. Definitely make sure uh, when someone gives you percentages or quotes or metrics that uh, you double check them. There is a lot of um, embellishment sometimes. Um, but um, no, I just Google if I'm interested in a subject. Um, I don't think there are any great books on work psychology. I think more and more of the writing is in articles um, and, and scientific journals online. So uh, if there's something you're interested in, I'm happy to chat later um, and, and help guide you with more specifics than that. Um, but seriously, just Google weird things and <laughs> wealth of information will come out. Yeah, I get in that rabbit hole as well. Um, except let's do another question if we have time. Um, uh, here, I have a question here it says, does GitHub hire worldwide or just within the US? But I think you answered it during the, the talk saying we're worldwide and everything. So I'm going to just uh, take this. Oh, we do. Uh, 
we do hire oh, we hire internationally but we hire yeah. in 17 countries right now um mm -hmm. we want to make sure that people are set up um to be successful in the companies they're in and then when we enter a new company that it's not just a one-off um person being hired in that country um, i think there are culture reasons not to do that um, there's also it's not fair to that one person um, to be the exception rather than the rule so when we enter a new country we try to have a couple people um, there mm. as well um, so if you're in one of those 17 countries please apply if we're uh, if you're not um, know that we're getting there and we do want to be you know like risk we want to take over little by little um, and be everywhere so so would you hire somebody who's nomadic uh, yeah, we have a couple um, I I uh, hubbers. I nomadic developer in Chiang Mai. For oh, kids. I'm sure you have. We have hubbers who are legally located in one of these countries, but are nomadic um, mm. and run around all the time. And we may or may not know where they are at all times. <laughs> um, but no, being being having one home address is is not not a requirement other than for our HR and legal departments. Great, nice. Uh, we have time for one more question, and after I will try to brighten my screen again because I'm getting in the dark more and more. <laughs> um, so one next question is from Tom. Retreats are great for bonding once or twice a year, but are there any day-to-day -day tensions or issues between co-located teams and remote individual, and how do you combat these? Um, yeah, there, of course, are uh, clashes between uh, remote individuals and distributed teams. Uh, we have teams like a support team I mentioned that is 100% distributed. We have teams like my finance team that is more, or my people ops team, which is more co-located. We have teams that are a mixture of both. Um, I try to remind people that everyone needs to act like a distributed company, regardless of where you are. I think that could be a helpful uh, mentality. Um, I think another... Um, little slogan I like to use is, uh, that we use a lot at GitHub is assume no malice when you're communicating with people, um, regardless of where they are, or how you're communicating. Uh, remember, they're not trying to be jerks. Um, <laughs> they, um, so don't assume that they are. Um, and then on top of that, I think it really comes down to the team um, and the manager um, to help with conflict. Um, we have done some conflict training here, of course, uh, at GitHub and some manager training um, that focuses on those um, things. Uh, whenever you get two people um, in a room together and hash it out, um, it's always best. And then, of course, if the manager or HR needs to step in, that's a whole different story that I won't get into. Um, but yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have conflict whether you have everybody in the office um, or you have everybody distributed. That's just human nature. Not everybody's gonna like each other. Um, your job is to ensure that people can work productively together um, and are creating a positive uh, environment, not only for themselves but for the everybody around them. Um, and without specific problems, I can't give you specific answers, but I hope that helps. Cool. We have time for another one. Um, oh. You have a corking or employees in Delhi, India. Can you tell us more? I do not see any openings in your in our time zone. I think maybe he he or she saw um, maybe a, a dot on India. Do you have people in India? What? We don't have people in India at the moment, uh, but we do travel quite regularly. We have a great mm -hmm. development base in India, um, so our team is out there quite frequently. We will let you know when when we open new countries. I promise. Nice. Last one, very quickly. Um, when these summits come together, how do you balance the organization of the activities vs the volume of people? It's not straightforward to have such large groups participate in the same activities. Yeah, so we've done this a couple different ways. Uh, our last summit uh, with the entire company, we did more of a conference style. So there were a bunch of conference uh, talks that people could sign up to depending on what their level of interest was. Um, and the same went for activities. Uh, so there were opportunities for people to get together. Um, they signed up for an activity. They didn't know who was going to be with them on that activity. Um, and that way we got a good mix of people. So there are lots of opportunities for us to come together as an entire company. Um, and then lots of opportunities for us to 
break out and to meet new people um, that we may not normally um, talk with. So um, I think giving people opportunity, we also give people opportunity for rest. Um, even mm -hmm. if it's just 25 people or it's 600 people, not everybody's an extrovert and not everybody's an extrovert for three days straight. So mm -hmm. um, remember to balance opportunities for nap time or for dinner time. Um, no, one, no one operates well when they're hangry. Um, but then give people the opportunity to, to have smaller interactions. Um, that's, that's when the real like strong bonding, bonding can happen. Awesome. Well, it's done right now with the, for the time we have for the Q and A, but thank you so much for all your amazing insights about GitHub and how it works. I'm sure everybody has been really liking uh, your session and the Q and A. So um, thank you very much, Lara. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change session, but thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. See you. Bye. Bye. So I'm going to go ahead and change session. And also, unfortunately, the light is going down a lot here. So I'm going to try putting another, a little bit more light. Um, see you in five minutes.